Jessica the Sweetwater Stitcher and welcome to my channel. Today is Thursday, September 15th and I want to say thank you for stopping by to check out what I've been working on in the past week. Um, this channel is primarily about cross stitch. Um, I do have some quilting stuff sometimes um, and other crafts mostly pertaining to um, quilting and or cross stitch, uh, sometimes some organization uh, and all of that mixed in together. So thank you to those who are returning and welcome to those of you who are new to my channel. I really appreciate you coming back every week to, to stop by. So I want to go ahead and jump right in and get started. I have a lot to show today. My table is a mess, which I know many people say, um, but I just, I made my list with all my stuff I wanted to share and then I put it all on the table. So we'll be finding it together today. <laughs> One of the things I want to be working on in the coming weeks is organizing um, and cleaning up in my craft room, which is um, our bonus room above our garage. And I'm also working room by room throughout my house, cleaning and organizing and trying to um, get rid of some stuff just to get things cleaned out. Over the summer, I feel like everything went everywhere. And um, I now it's almost it's like spring cleaning, but we're in the fall or soon to be in the fall, which is still in the 90s in Florida. So although it's maybe feeling like fall in other places, we are still very hot. So, um, but that's just some of what I'm going to work on next weekend. My husband and my son are going out of town. So I will be here with the two younger girls and during their naps and at night, cause they go to bed early. I am really hoping to be able to get in my craft room, get sewing done, work on the stitching mat. Like I still have to sew it back together. <laughs> I haven't had any time to come up here. Um, and I know people are interested in the dimensions and how to do that. So I am going to try to do a lot of stuff next weekend. Um, when I have some time, when my, my son is the one who need is stays up later and, um, needs more. So he's going to be gone. So hopefully I can get some other stuff done. So, um, like I said, let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, a couple things I wanted to say before I got started was I watched two eclectic stitchers and I think I forgot to write their names down. One is Penny and I forget the other's name. Their channel, I will link them below, was great. They just have one floss tube out. They went to summer school at the attic, um, had a great time and they live in Phoenix. So they, that's their local needer workshop, but they had so much stuff to show and they also quilt. So I can already tell that that's going to be a great channel to be watching. So, um, I will link them below two eclectic stitchers. And then last night I was watching at the recommendation of a bunch of people, um, so and so's S E W N apostrophe S E W S who is Nancy and Kathy. They also are great. They only have a couple videos, but they, um, and I am pretty sure one of them, and I want to say it's Kathy, but maybe I'm wrong, had their own video or had their own channel. And, and now they've come together. They had so much stuff finished into all different types of finishes. Um, and then they had a whole section, they were putting away their B stuff. So they were showing all kinds of charts that were already stitched. And a lot of it is stuff that either I've just seen the chart and I've never seen it stitched or charts I hadn't seen. So it was good and bad, bad in the enabling part, but good. And it was like a lot of great stuff. And then, um, Nancy, I think, she, they both do wool applique, but she was showing like some really cool, um, let me see, like this I bought, but like making pumpkins and she made a crow all out of wool, um, with patterns and some she said she made up, but, um, I would highly recommend going and watching them. So both of those. And then also, um, 
Kara Lee was stitching his elementary. She had a video this week and um, I watched hers. She always has great stuff to show. Um, she's a teacher and, or a, she works at a school. She's not in the classroom anymore. She's um, uh, pushing in and working with kids, I think reading. Um, but she stitches almost every morning. She's always posting on Instagram and she has great stuff to show too. So go check all of them out if you haven't already. If you have, I'm sure you can back me up that they have great channels. So I will link all three of those below. There are also other ones that I watched, but those were just some that recently um, that were kind of new to me and I tried out and I really, well, not Kara Lee, but the other two um, were new and they were great. So highly recommend them. All right, then I wanted to, I'm trying really hard because I have a lot of my pieces stored in Rubbermaid containers downstairs and I'm upstairs. And so when I get all my things and I sit down and do the video, half the time I forget to bring up previous finishes. So I'm trying hard to bring up previous things I've worked on to, um, to show you guys. So I did grab a couple things. I have not decorated my house for fall yet. So I had to dig in the fall bins, but that's another thing next weekend um, I want to try to do. So hopefully, I think I have three or four days where I will have lots of time to be doing stuff that I need to get done. Um, so this is from Stitching with the Housewives. It's called Pumpkin Spice. And I kind of feel like I might have changed something, but I'm not 100% sure. This was a free, this was one of the freebies that was attached to another one of their fall charts from last year. I do not remember what it's attached to, but I will look it up after I'm done recording and in the description I will have it, um, I'll have it linked. So I stitched it on black for, or 14 count chalkboard black, Ada. And then I stitched, or I'm sorry, not stitched. I mounted it with Priscilla's Pretty Plaids. I put some Rick Rack on the top and the bottom and I stuck it here. And then I have this bow and the pumpkin. Now, when I pulled this out, not that I don't like it, but I kind of am thinking I'm not really into this right now. So I might take this part off and add something smaller. Um, so this would fit in something. Actually, I'm just gonna take it off right now. So this is what it looks like. <laughs> So I, not, th again, not that I don't like this, but this is like not really what I like on this piece. And I remember this last year, I wasn't really in love with it. So I think I'm gonna put something else at the top. Maybe you do one of the messy bows or just like put a pumpkin. I got those wooden um, pumpkin pieces the other day and maybe just glue something like that. Just a little bit more simple so that this can sit in the tear tray and it's not, like this is too high for my tear tray. So here is a previous finish that I'm going to reinvigorate. So, and that's something that you can always do. If you have a bow, cause I used hot glue to glue the bow on, take the bow off, put something else on, put a different bow on. Um, even if I wanted to, because I hot glued the stitching to the fabric, I could take this off and put it on something else. So you can always refresh your pieces or whatever you wanna do. So there's my first previous finish. And then, sorry for reaching, I gotta figure out where to put all these. This is a little house, it's either little house or country cottage, I can't remember now. This is one of their monthly cottages, cottages of the month. And I, this is one of the first pieces that I stitched. This is on lamb's wool 14 count. And I think I, it's the called for colors, but it had a border at the top and it has a border at the bottom. I had no interest in stitching the borders because I did not want, I just wanted it to be done. <laughs> So I didn't stitch them and I actually like it like this better for my purposes. And then this is just a, um, like a barnwood frame from Hobby Lobby and I just have a bow and a covered button and I 
I really like this piece. It's like it, not putting the top and the bottom border on these charts kind of simplifies it. And I wanted it to fit in a frame that I already had. I didn't want it to be um, too big. So I need to actually set that out because I forgot I had that. And I have the October one also. And I did the same thing where I didn't stitch the top and the bottom border on that. Um, and it's in a, a pumpkin frame. And I'll show that to you guys. And then this is a little piece from Stitching with the Housewives as well. This is from last year. This, I think it's called Fairy Tale Pumpkin Seeds or Fairy Tale Pumpkin or something. Um, it was one of the seed packets, but I liked it because I really liked the pumpkin. Um, and this is on 14 count chalkboard Ada. Um, just with Chelsea's checks. This is a bow. I don't remember where that ribbon is from covered button and this is on one of the um small boards and I don't know what this board is called from stitch etc this is like the perfect size for the tear tray tidbits if you like the stitch etc boards this I don't even know what the size is but I really like this one and I had mounted um what else did I mount on this board the um small piece that goes with calendar crates. I had, uh, that's what I bought a bunch of these for was to mount it on here. And then there is a hole, this hole isn't very big, um, that they drill through. And I was hanging it, um, with my calendar crates. But after the November calendar crate, I kind of fell off doing them last year. So, um, I don't have that to show. And the one that's back there, if you can see this, um, sunflower one the small piece that was on the board I gave to my son's teacher so um, I don't even have that anymore but again this is a chart from last year it's in their Etsy shop um, PDF download so that is I think that was I just brought those three yep that was my previous finishes then my fully finishes um, I was able to finish stitching, which I think I showed it finished stitched last week, be thankful, and I FFO'd it. And if I didn't show it all the way done, then here it is all the way done. <laughs> I don't remember if it was or wasn't, but um, here is Be Thankful by Brenda Gervais. I stayed true to the colors she picked but I just picked the like what I had for my stash. So like her house was yellow. Well, this is different yellow color. The teal is different. Like all the colors are different, but I just picked the similar that I had. I finished it into a pillow. This is my backing. This is um, fabric from Hobby Lobby. I don't know if they still have it. I got it a while ago. I have a drawer with some like Hobby Lobby pillow backing fabric. And then I also have like all my stitching with the housewives. So I kind of go back and forth between which I like. I like a pretty basic for the back of my pillows. I don't like any like major prints or anything um, because I don't really want to focus on the back. I did sew all the, or I'm sorry, I didn't sew all the way around. I sewed and I left an opening at the top with the intention I was going to put crushed walnut shells at the bottom of my pillow. Well, when I went to stuff it, I couldn't find the crushed walnut shells anywhere. So I ended up um, just, it's all filled with polyfill, but I filled it pretty um, full. And then I sewed it up at the top and then I put on this, um, this is the same rickrack that I used on the Seasons of the Heart pillows. And I um, ordered this off of Etsy. I'm pretty sure it's the same rickrack that um, Brenda Gervais recommends. It's like just a natural. And then I just kind of, she recommends like pushing it in so that you can kind of see it. So it's not just laying flat. You can have it lay flat. But the one thing that I, I had realized this before, but it really like resonated, I guess, was I always think that when I leave a hole to stuff it, instead of stuffing it out of the back, my 
when I close it up, I never feel like it looks right. And most of the time you would close it at the bottom, but I wanted to have their crushed walnut shells, which I mean, I guess you could, it would be fine. But um, for the purposes of like, you'd hide it. But once you put the rickrack on, it hides any kind of closure um, for your stitching. So here it is again. And I also, um, I didn't read her directions, but for finishing, but I went um, one inch away from my blue outline and that's where I cut my fabric to stitch it because I wanted there to like, I wanted it to um, have enough room to have the stuffing and you still to be able to see the, um, the blue. So I went one inch from the blue line all the way around and then that's where I cut my, um, that's the size I cut it. And that would be different for any, or I mean, like the size of your pillow would be based on the count fabric you have. So that's why I wanted to say the one inch. And so that's my finish. And then this is how I have it displayed. And let me fix my little pumpkins here. And I want to make another pillow. So I, you'll see in my um, whips, I have a couple other things, potent, oopsies potentially going um, to go in here as well. But this is what I have so far. This is just a like a wooden pumpkin from Hobby Lobby. This tray is from Hobby Lobby. And then these are the pumpkins I showed last week. They came in a pack from Joann's. And then I stuck, of course it's all gonna fall. I took off of, this was a garland from Hobby Lobby. And it had, oh goodness gracious. It had these pumpkins and it had all these felt um, balls on it. So if you're interested, this is at Hobby Lobby, it's a garland. I cut it apart. So I have the wool pumpkins, which I did put in here, but then I felt like they were a little bright and these pumpkins matched the stitching better. So I'm gonna use these in another tray. But then I have all of these little wool balls. So I just stuck them down in the bottom of the tray to just like add some, I'm trying to do it so you can see and everything doesn't fly out, but it just adds some extra stuff to the bottom of the tray. So this is going to, and I'll take a picture and post this on Instagram, but this is going to sit on my um, coffee table ottoman I have in my family room. And I love this pillow so much. And I'm very excited to get working on the Christmas one, which is joy and good cheer. And so I'm thinking she's gonna have a spring and a summer one because they have the same um, like bird and they have the same border type of look. So I'm, a, I'm thinking it's a like a series. So that was my, um, FFO, and then I also did finish um, this pattern, which was the alphabet pumpkin. I'm still working on FFOing it, and this was for a um, for an exchange, and so I don't want to show um, the FFO or show the finished piece until it's all mounted. And I'll take a picture of like my exchange goodies mail it off and then next week I'll show it because they should have received it um, by next week. So just to leave it a little, I don't, I have no clue who it's even going to yet. Um, it's part of uh, Michelle with Farm Good Dry Goods or Farm Girl Dry Goods. Yeah. Her Patreon, she um, had an exchange and that's what it's through. But I, um, like I said, I don't know who it's going to go to, so I don't want to spoil the surprise if it so happens that the person watches. Probably not, but just in case. <laughs> so I'll show that next week. And I haven't fin I have not fully finished it. I have it almost ready, but um, not perfect yet. So that is my FFOs, my finishes. And um, so let me go ahead and go to my whips. So this is, it is September, sampler September, September, or sampler September soiree, 
One is for reproductions, one is for original samplers. And again, you don't have to stitch on samplers. You can, you can do whatever you want. I've kind of been doing a little bit of both. So I have been working on my sampler or a couple of them that I had talked about in the previous video. And then I also have been um, getting in the mood to stitch more smalls. And I'm like on the fence of fall Halloween and Christmas. So I like, I'm really in the mood to stitch Christmas, but then of something fall gets on my radar and then I'm like, oh, I want to stitch that. So I finished the Be Thankful pillow and I it really motivated me to get to something else fall. So I do have a start and a, um, a little sal going on with a couple other people, I'll tell you in a minute, but um, that would go in my bowl. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get it finished um, to go in the bowl this year. I'm, I'm gonna try, but it has a house and alpha, and so I don't know if it's too much stitching um, for right now. But let me go ahead and get to the first one. The first one I did put in some stitches on is um, Sally Spencer, which is by Birds of a Feather. This is out of print. You can look on the secondary, you can search for it, and sometimes you can find it. It is a little bit hard. I somehow, just by luck, was able to find a copy. I had been looking for a long time before I found one. Um. I am sticking to the colors, but I haven't like changed the colors, kind of like the Be Thankful. So it's gonna look the same, but it's not the same exact colors. And this I'm doing for the Sampler Camp uh, 2022 with Sherry Colorado Cross Stitcher. So in that, it, it kind of changed my plan. I have until December to get this done. So I am working on it, but I'm not working on it as hard as I had originally planned when I was trying to get the whole thing done in September. So it kind of freed me up to be able to work on the smalls. And then I started a couple other things, which I'm sure you're very surprised about. Um, but this is my progress. I did finish um, the little O, the little N, the big N, I came in and did this whole border and I did that letter. So that was one night of stitching. So everything is pretty big and this is 28 count um, creme brulee by r and &R. So it's going to be a rather big piece. Um, so, but it's, it's really fun to stitch on. And the letters are really, and I like the colors. So, and let me see if I can. Of course, they're not all together. That would be helpful. So I have, let's see, Grits, Brother in Blue, Hibiscus, Classic Color Works Ruby Slippers, Cast Iron Skillet, and Tropical Paradise from Classic Color Works. So you, I'm sure you know that I'll hold it like this. So there's my colors. Between Weeks Dye Works, Classic Color Works, and Gentle Arts, there are many colors that have the same name, but they're a different color. So if you're looking like Ruby Slippers is much brighter in Classic Color Works versus the Ruby Slippers and Gentle Arts. So depending on which one you are looking, like if you're looking for a brighter red or a not so bright red, that would depend on the um, maker that you would pick from. All right, then I did do a little bit more costume on the costume party by Hands on Design. I was really trying to get it done and I just, I couldn't get in the mood to get it finished, it's so close. So I finished, or I worked on the bats, adding the bats in and I put in some of the green stuff that's coming from the cauldron. I'm so close to getting it done. I'm gonna try to, to work on it this week. I just was, when I picked it up, I, I wasn't really in the mood to work on it. So that's okay. I have a whole nother month until it's Halloween. So it's no rush to get it done. And this is in um, 
a painted leaf co Teresa Coquit bag. And then let's see. Okay, then this was, this is in a Barbara Johns. Um, oh, I think I got something on it. Uh, this is Barbara Johns Stitching with Grammy, the bag that I won from her channel. And then I also has the beautiful flannel floss friend, which this thing is great. You can see I have some of my floss in here. So this chart that's in this bag is called Remember Me, and it is from Teresa Kogut's Patreon. So if you love this, like I love this, the only way to get it right now is to be a member of either the tier three or tier four Patreon. This is for September. And if you are in tier three or four, this is free for the month of September. Obviously you have to pay for Patreon. After the month of September, this will go into the Patreon secret shop that has past Patreon charts. So if you are a member of, I believe you have to be a, at least tier two to be able to access the secret shop, but in tier two, um, three or four, you can purchase this after the month of September. So some people were asking, cause I posted this on my Instagram, um, where to get it and that's how you get it. And I'll put a link to the Patreon below. As many other floss tubers have said, it is well worth your money because you at least get two charts. If you're in tier four, three, there's a mystery stitch along going on and all of those charts together could be at least $50 and Patreon is not $50 a month. So um, if you're on the fence and you love Teresa Kogut, which if you can't see, I have my Teresa Kogut shirt on today, um, I would highly recommend joining. Um, so this chart I decided, I, I, let me back up. She had a sneak peek of just this bottom part last month. And I was like, I want to do that. And when it came out at the beginning of September, I had all these other plans together. And I'm like, I don't know when am I going to fit this in to my plan? Well, my birthday, as you know, was um, September 4th. And that day it was fun and I loved every minute of it. But I, we were doing, it was a Sunday and we were doing stuff all day. So I didn't even get time to stitch on my birthday. So I didn't have a birthday star or anything. And um, so I decided that I would start, I don't even, of course, have been horrible writing in my book of days. So I don't even remember the day I started it. But I decided that this would be my birthday start. I love the colors. I love the border, the flowers. Again, the borders are what like sells me on half of these samplers. And then the colors also. So all of that being said, I decided to start this as part of Sampler September and like my birthday start, even though it was a little bit late, it was in the month of September. So all of that, I have a couple things in this bag to show. So I showed the floss friend. Then this is one of the um, floss books that Kathy and Molly from uh, Linen and Scraps showed how to make. And I had it, I had it where it had two holes, but then I didn't like the size. So, and I had it where it was showing on this side and I was, I tried to reinvent what I had already made because I didn't feel like making a whole nother one at that time. But I, um, I couldn't find any um, floss tags that were already punched and I didn't feel like punching the holes. So I decided to try, this is DMC in the floss away bags. So I made, took some of my stickers from my, um, those books you can buy on Amazon, stuck them on either side, put the floss away bags in here and this is where my floss is. And I'm actually really liking this. Uh, I probably won't do it with, <coughs> excuse me, with every chart that has DMC, cause I do like um, 
the floss tags. I really like this idea for if you're using silks to put them in the floss away bags. And then I think I'm gonna keep my, excuse me, my DMC uh, on the ring or um, on the floss tag still. But I just wanted to show this. So if you like this too, there is a, <coughs> excuse me, tutorial on linen and scraps floss tubes showing how to make these. All right, so I decided to stitch this on 36 count barbs blend by R and R that I just so happened to get a piece from Crazy Annie's online. It was like a random piece that they had left. It is so pretty. And this is my start. And it's in the hoop because I've been working on it. Um, but is going really, really fast. So um, if you like it and you want to pick it up, it's really fast. But that's this is 36 count. So that's like the size of the that the flowers will be. But I'm excited to get back to this. Again, other things have kind of come on my radar, squirreled me away, but I want to get back to this. I kind of got on a, um, like a smalls kick, trying to see what I could get done before I went to decorate for fall because I don't really have a lot of pillows. So I was thinking about trying to do some pillows. Um, so also, well, I'll show that in a minute. <clears throat> Let's see. So then this was, um, well, this is a couple things. Um, let me pull it out. Well, first, no, oh, too many things going through my head. All right, so I need my card to tell me all the info. This is the chart I started. This is called Butternut House Pin Keep by Stacy Nash. Um, I first saw Lori Holt doing this, which is where I fell in love with it. I love the house so much, and I think this, and this pillow in the same bowl together would be so cute, which is why I'm trying so hard to work on this because I really want this in the bowl together. Um, but there's so many beautiful things. It's so hard to like put blinders on and not get distracted um, because I am by no means able to just monogamously stitch on only one thing. I, I just like cannot do it. Um, but it's okay because this is a hobby and I can, you can, everyone can do whatever they want. Um, and uh, one other thing about, um, oh, which one was it? It was on the two eclectic stitchers. Their motto is you can't finish anything if you don't start it. And I couldn't agree more. <laughs> That's why I have all of these starts because if I feel in the mood for something and I go digging in my whip pile, I'm sure I will find something. And to me, starting the project is the biggest step, which you'll see from some of the things that I am dot like I want to start so bad, but it's like I just I can't get over the hump to start it. I don't know what the deal is, but once it's started, it's really easy to pick it up and keep going. So that's another reason why I do like starting things because if I just like have one corner or I start in the middle, I have that starting, um, the starting point that I can then continue working. So that was a tangent, but back to Butternut House Pin Keep. I, along with Jen, who is Spunky Jen, on Instagram. She also has a floss tube called Stitching in the Bluegrass. And Jenny, who is Jen Bell 61 underscore and underscore Ollie underscore the poodle are doing a sow and it is hashtag butternut sow for this. Um, I forget which one of the two of them had posted this on their Instagram that they were starting it. And I said, I have it all kitted up. I really want to start it. And then they said, let's do a sow. So that's how that, so it really motivated me to get it out. <laughs> I had all the stuff because I bought the fabric 
um, when I was at Brick City, but I just hadn't, again, picked it up to get it started. So this is the pattern. And this was one day of working on it. <clears throat> and I am, let's see, stitching this on 36 count vellum by Picture This Plus. It's really pretty. This is the start. So I went ahead and started in the middle, which is like right here, because I wanted to build the house and kind of see how big it was gonna be. And then like the house is easy fill in. So if I get some of this other stuff outlined, because it is all DMC, um, then I can go back and fill in when I'm like maybe sitting and watching my kids play where I don't have to be looking at the chart and focusing. Um, so I try to do that a lot especially if I'm using DMC is like outline so I can go back and fill in and then I have all my colors on my floss style from Chantel's 141 and I was really excited to get to use this it was the perfect amount of colors there's one more but it's a week's dye works so that one wouldn't go on here and then somebody was asking which I know Chantel has showed this too this is just a piece of wood. On the back, I wrote in pencil. I hope you guys can see this. I wrote in pencil the DMC colors. When I'm finished, I can either erase them or I can just sand it with a piece of sandpaper and the numbers will come right off. Then I don't have to worry about the stickers, um, even like the labels with the label maker, you can do that, but I. I always personally, they're always falling off and then I don't know what the colors are. So this was a way that I could write it on here and not worry about it. And um, I know she has a new floss style that she's including Chantel um, in with all of her charts. You just get one per um, chart order though. So if you order five charts, you'll get one dial. Um, but it has more spots and um, I believe she is going to be also selling them, but I'm not 100% sure on that. So go check her shop out. I will link it below. And then I also have some fun stuff about her shop and the giveaways um, and my plans for next month. So we'll talk about that in a minute. And then I'd have one more and hopefully this is not going too long. This is I love fall most of all. So when I got back on my smalls kick, I pulled this out. I had already started this. This um, was an exclusive at Country Sampler and now I think you can get it other places. I got mine from Country Sampler and this is where I am. I had only had the top of the pumpkin and like a little bit of this so I was able to get in some more of the two acorns and a little bit of the um the greenery and then i was trying to get to where i could fill it or do the flowers um and this too i'm using similar colors but just whatever i had in my stash and you could order this from her website too i think they're all sold out but it came with the chart and it came with the tray and the little um, things in the tray. But I'm pretty sure that that is sold out now. So you can get the chart though. <clears throat> and I think you can get the chart from her website also. Oh, and this is in a, I have it shoved in two bags. This is a bag from Tammy Blaylock, a Blackbird Designs bag. And I'll go ahead and show this bag too. This is like my fall bag of goodness. This is a bag from Michelle Lee Quilts on Instagram, or Instagram. She is on Instagram, but from her Etsy shop. Um, and I ordered this bag and then I'll show you in a minute. She was so nice and sent me a Christmas bag. She sent this to me. Um, she's so sweet. 
And then she also sent another one to use as a giveaway. I have uh, some other things for today's video, but I will be giving one of these away next week in the video. So come back next week if you love this bag too. Um, and in here, I just have a couple of my um, things I wanna get started. So that's all of my whips. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into haul and then kind of talk about my plans. So I want to kind of when I get into the Christmassy, I want to get work on this um, joy and good cheer. And this is the one that looks like this. So you can see um, very similar. And then on September 22nd, which I think at this point, I'm going to try to wait. Um, I am doing a sal or I'm following along the sal. Uh, we're stitching the winter house from the season. Oh, well, I guess it's here too. The seasons of the heart book. Um, the winter pillow with Aaron, who is perpetual stitches or I'm sorry, perpetual projects on floss tube and Instagram. Heather, who is Sunshine HEV, and Linda, who is Stitchy Linda, um, and a couple of, I think at least Aaron started. Um, I don't know if Heather did, but I have all this kitted up in the called for colors. So I want to get this done and then like have this and my um, joy and good cheer. And then I also have in this bag, I got this Souvenirs of the Heart, the Home for Christmas. And I'm changing the colors to match with the other projects that are in this bag. So it'll like just tone it down a little bit. Same, like I'll use red, but I'm just gonna use like a darker red instead of the bright and the greens. I'm gonna change to the greens that match um, these other two charts. So all three of these things can go in the bowl together. All right. So that was some haul-ish. All right, now I have some more haul. Um, let's see. These were from Stacy's. Um, oh no, where did, here we go. Stacy Stitches Creative Studio, and this is her logo. And then, um, this is stuff from her and then I'll show you the stuff about um, the retreat too. So I had ordered, I already got the floss pack. This was the Liz Matthews chart for, that goes with the um, Autumn Garden. I think I have it right here. I haven't, uh, let me see. Yep, these are the flosses. These I bought from um, Top Knot Stitcher, but this goes together. This is from Stacy. And then also from Stacy, I bought Heart and Hand Halloween Tiny Town. So cute. And uh, Chantel at 141 Design Company has the most perfect backer for this chart. So if you have all of the tiny towns or one of them or whatever, go check her out. Those are amazing. And then... So those were both Expo releases. Stacy sent four, oh, I thought it was only, oh my gosh. No, one, two, three, four, five free charts. They were all like Expo free charts. And let me see. I mean, this one, you can see what it looks like done. That's from uh, Wild Violet. Then this one is from uh, Manny D. Donna. This is called Fall into Autumn Pillow. And this is a free chart from her. And then there was a scissor, t a scissor tail design, Merry Christmas, which that will be perfect for the next thing I'm going to talk about. Um, but those were all, they were all free charts that were from Expo that Stacy sent too. So thank you so much. And I'm sure if you order Expo things from her, she will send that too. Um, and then this is the chart and I will be giving one of these away in a little bit, but um, this is my chart I chose for this month from her shop, Autumn Cloche by Hello from Liz Matthews. And I 
bought the DMC today. I'm going to do this in DMC. Um, and I'm pretty sure I have Steinbeck from Needle and Flax. And if I do, I am probably gonna stitch it on that. Um, so this is beautiful. This will be one of the giveaways. This is my copy though. Um, but Stacy will send you that. So I wanted to, um, to show that and that's my pick for this month. And then, um, again, talking about Stacy. I don't know where my, this is her retreat, Beach Please. And it is Thursday, February 22nd, 2024 through Saturday, the 24th. Um, this is the info. This is the other info. If you're interested, I'll put a link to the registration below. I am going along with some other Florida people I know have already signed up and some people from other states. I saw, I heard the bougie sti booze, can't talk, bougie stitchers, Nancy and Jenny say that they are going and I am excited to meet them. Um, but I wanted to mention that again. And then one more thing about Stacy's website is remember and I'll put this below too um, there is an exclusive code for my viewers the code is sweetwater and you get 10% off your order um, so if you have other things that you're interested in buying from Expo or any of the other great things she has in her shop um, and I'm pretty sure it's just charts I don't think you can buy her like wooden pieces which are also great um, but the coupon goes for the charts. Um, so you can use that for 10% off. All right. So that was that. Then, I am sorry if this is going so long. Okay, this is another thing. I just wanted to reiterate the stand. A bunch of people have ordered this, which I know I'm not the only one to show it, but it is the most amazing stand ever to hold your pattern. So I wanted to show. So this is the pattern and I have, I put a needle minder on it too. Here is a example of showing the metal stand. See how it holds the pattern up? And the other part that's so great is that this is metal and so it sits like flat and it's not going to topple over on whatever type of surface. So like I said, I put it on the arm of my couch and the couch is soft. This stays and it doesn't fall over which is what makes this to me so great and then this just holds my chart and it's wonderful so if you missed out on hearing about that last week or you haven't heard from other people this is a metal pattern stand from amazon the needle minder is separate but um highly highly recommend this and i have used many different things and this is definitely the winner um, and then other people have talked about how it lays flat. It goes in a retreat bag. Um, any, it's just easy. And I stick it. I have a bunch of baskets that like I keep downstairs by my chair. I just stick it down in there. And then when I'm ready to stitch, I pull it out and I have it to stitch with. So I wanted to talk about that again. And then let's see. Um, okay. <clears throat> my gosh, I have so much stuff. Let me see. Oh, I wanted to, um, this was a, uh, um, a very kind card that I got from Michelle. She had won a giveaway. She made this beautiful card and then she also sent me a sweet little um, gift card. Thank you so much. It is completely not necessary. I love give, doing the giveaways and brightening people's day. So, but I really truly appreciate that. Um, so that little piece, then I did get a couple other charts I just wanted to show. I was able to get this off of a resale website. This is an exclusive that was from Kitten Stitcher's um, Advent Box, Lucy Owen, and I saw um, Brenda and Laura, they were working on this and someone was selling it. And so I was like, okay, I need that. So I got that. Um, and then uh, I 
Again, I have no idea when I'm starting this, but I really, really like this. Ottoman Hawk Run Hollow, and it was funny because I had already ordered this and then I saw Annie, the proper stitcher, show that she got it too. Um, I've seen so many people stitch this and it really intrigues me. Um, I don't know when I will do it, but I'm thinking like maybe doing a month per block or something like that, um, just kind of at my own pace. The one thing is, this is all of the floss. <laughs> there is a lot of colors. So slowly I'll probably get the colors and then I don't know when, but I really, really wanted to, to get this, to have it. Um, it's so pretty. Then this was a PDF. This is from the Heart Needle Art by Wendy. And I saw this on Chris the Camping Stitchers YouTube and all of the blues in this sampler got me. So I went ahead and got that. Again, this was a PDF. This is really, that's probably what I'll do first. Um, but that little one is so cute. And then even this, all of it's so cute. But this was on her um, Etsy shop. And I'll link that below. All right, then there's a lot of and thens today. So I showed you the bag from Michelle Lee Quilts. This is another bag, and this was actually um, Happy Mail. This is from the Atlanta Stitcher, Wendy, and she makes project bags, excuse me, and her Facebook group, and I'll put this below too, is Project Bags by Atlanta Stitcher, and Atlanta Stitcher is one word. And this is her project bag that she sent me. So first of all, thank you so much, Wendy, for sending this. Um, but she wanted to um, let you guys know that she is going to, on her Facebook page, she is going to have a welcome post that says like, welcome from Sweetwater Stitcher. And on there and or just through Messenger, you can message her to order bags. And I don't know if it's only in this pattern or print or if other ones, and she'll have other bags for sale on her Facebook group. Um, but this bag is amazing. It's a little bit bigger than some of the other bags. However, it holds a lot of stuff in it. So, and the fabric is really sturdy. It's very, very well made. It is fully, you can, I already have stuff in it. It is fully lined. It has no exposed seams. Um, the zipper is amazing. It's one of the big zippers. So it zips and unzips very nicely and the back is um, the same. But if you are looking for a Christmas bag, which coincidentally I was, and that's what she sent me, um, I highly, highly recommend this. And inside of the bag, I am starting to gather Christmas charts that I want to work on in October. And that kind of leads me to my next, um, or actually I have a couple more pieces of haul. Then I'll talk about the October. So, um, let me see. This is another bag. <laughs> I have lots of bags today. Um, this was a bag from Starry Owl. I wanna say it the right way. Starry Owl Stitchery, Tara, who also makes amazing bags. This bag, she cr makes them and posts them on her Etsy shop. She only has so many, so you have to order when she posts them. But I was able to snag this bag. This is the back. Again, amazing quality. This is the inside, which is so cool looking. And then she so generously sent me a little notions bag to match. So cute. Thank you, Tara. And I happened to get the mail right before I started the video and I, this was in the mailbox. So um, again, same thing, no exposed seams, amazing work. Um, so this is another one and I'll put all of them below. Um, Starry Owl and also Michelle Lee Quilts, they make them and they post them on their Etsy shop for you to go on and order what they have. Um, Wendy from the Atlanta Stitcher, which is this bag, she is taking orders um, 
on her Facebook page. So I'll put again all the info below so that you um, know where to find all of the bags. Um, and previous or prior to me getting into cross stitch, I already had a bag problem. Now I have an even bigger bag problem because now we have cross stitch bags. Um, but I've always loved bags, purses, all of that stuff. So this just like adds to it all. Um, okay. So plans for October. And I know we're not done with September, but just thinking ahead as to what's going on in the next month is I am going to be working on the support group stitch along with Back Quarter Shop. And someone was asking me what fabric I was using. This is, I think this is antique white. I'm for sure using that. And I'm still going back and forth if I'm going to use these colors like this, or if I'm going to just pick shades of pink and do everything in shades of pink, I'm still debating on that. I'm thinking I'm just gonna use these just so I don't have to think about it because I already bought the pack. Um, but this is one thing I'm doing in October. And I hope you guys will join me um, in stitching this as it supports a great cause. And um, that quarter shop is also, um, has a link for fundraising for the Breast Cancer um, Foundation. They will be donating money as well, as well as Lori will be donating money. So if um, you feel so led, I'll put that link below too. This is a great cause um, for everyone. Um, and I know myself and others have been affected in one way or the other by breast cancer, whether it's yourself, it's someone you know, an acquaintance, a family member. Um, so many people have been affected by this. So um, this that's one of the reasons why I really wanted to do um, this stitch along. All right, then I will be trying to look at my notes to remind myself what I'm doing. <laughs> um, I will be doing the Blackbird Halloween, and of course I didn't bring it over here, it's the Halloween stitches that go in that box that I bought. Um, oh, I cannot. Hold on one second and let me get it because it's right here. I want to show this in case you two have this pattern and or want to do it. Casting a Spell by Blackbird. This. Um, Linda, who is Stitchy Linda on Instagram, she has this um diane chrissy all who were at um, our table at the brick city retreat either have it or bought it um, we all have the box so linda suggested starting this in october um to do as much as we can I do not know if linda is intending on doing all of them i will be working on getting as many of them done as i can i also need to paint my box and get it ready for putting my pillows in. So I'm excited about this. I had previously started it um, a little bit, but I didn't get very far. Um, so I'm excited about doing that in October as well. And I also will be participating in along with Chantel. And let me get my notes to tell you the right thing. Um, she has a mystery box. It has 10 ornament, 10 wooden ornaments in it. Um, it is hashtag 141 mystery make along. And in the month of October, we'll be stitching smalls, whether they're already small ornaments or, excuse me, pieces of ornaments, or I'm sorry, pieces of larger projects that can be made into ornaments. Um, so in that, I have a couple things here that I'm for sure gonna be working on. Um, not all of them, but some of them is I um, bought from Expo these um, gift tags from Annie B's Folk Art. So cute. And either I'm gonna finish these on the wooden pieces or I might also just finish them on the tags in addition to my wooden pieces. Then this is from Kathy at Hands On Design. Um, Mary, and this is a free chart. It's called Berries in Bloom. Then I also have, this is from Barbara Anna, and I am going to, I wanna stitch the whole thing, but I also am just gonna stitch the Santa and put that on an ornament. 
And then, let's see. I want to work on this, Christmas in the Round by JBW. I had another, oh, here we go. Um, then the Merry Making Mini, Merry Christmas. I would like to stitch that for an ornament. And then in my bag, I just have some other charts I wanna work on, Christmas charts. This also will be a sal I am going to do um, starting in October. So I'll have more info about that later. But just in case you're interested, it is the miss the most one sorry, the best time of year by Brenda Gervais. So cute. So that is my um, October plans. And then I want to go ahead and give the um announcement of the giveaway winners and then the giveaways for this week so from last week and if you won if you can just send me an email with your name your address and what you want I'll get that in the mail to you so this was the first pack it was the starlight stitching things this is Kathy five boys you are the winner congratulations then number two was the uh, platinum linen Karen Monson, winner. Number three was Bird in Hand. And the winner of that is Pat Fortner. Pat Fortner. And then the last one was the Tiny Modernist. It was this Halloween chart and the winner is Susan C. And uh, remember the names I'm reading is your um, YouTube name. So Susan C, if that is your name on YouTube, then uh, you have won this along with the other ones. Um, so congratulations to everyone. If you will email me at sweetwaterstitcher at gmail.com, I will get that in the mail to you. So for this week, um, for the giveaways, I don't have a question. So if you just leave a comment um, telling me whatever, what you're stitching on, um, if it's getting cooler where you live, what you liked, didn't like about the video, um, Hopefully you like everything, um, but just a comment about something. Um, like the video, subscribe, be over 18 because I do have to ask for your address and then um, live in the U.S. Except for I do have one PDF and the PDF can be anywhere in the world because it will just be emailed to you. So for number one, I have compliments of Chantel at 141 Design Company. I have three boxes of the mystery make along um, surprise box to send. So th there are three chances to win number one. So if you're interested in the ornament box, write number one with your comment. Number two, this is compliments of Stacy at Stacy's Creative Studio, um, or Stacy Stitches Creative Studio is Autumn Cloche. And she will send you the chart. And I'm also going to purchase the DMC for you. And I'll mail the DMC also. So all you have to do is pick a piece of fabric out. And you can get stitching on this. Um, so that's number two. And number three is, this is from the French Giraffe. And I've given away her PDFs before. And this is the chart. It is called Pumpkin Garden. And if you cannot see this picture, it's small. Um, you can look on her Etsy shop along with all kinds of other goodies in her Etsy shop. She also, so this is number three. Um, Deborah at the French Giraffe, she also has a Facebook group that she posts her monthly free chart in. Um, it's called the French Giraffe, I believe. I'll put it below, but join her group. Follow along. Um, she has great charts in her Etsy shop. She has a lot of Santas. So if I think it's Santas from every country and how Santa's dressed kind of reflects the country. Um, so if you're looking for something for Christmas, those are great. She has other um, holidays too. So I would check out her shop, join her Facebook group. And then I think that that is all. Um, so I hope that you guys have a great week. Um, if it's getting cooler where you live, I hope you're able to get outside, do stitching outside. Um, if it's still warm, getting out as much as you can, but getting in some stitching as well. So until next week, I hope you have a great week and I'll see you next Thursday. Bye.